Hello, welcome to Bonus Action. This is episode five of Bonus Action, a Duels and Mandorks supplement podcast where we bring on some cool people and talk to them. This one's, this one's, he's fine. Uh, typical Gemini. Passable. <laughs> passable, passable at best. In the before times, before we actually had a name for this show and any sort of plan, uh, we had him on and we talked about magic, specifically because we were going to Gen Con and we're interested in partaking in magic for the first time in a way. So it was it was definitely from a we didn't know anything and typical knew a fair bit. Mm-hmm. Now we all are fairly knowledgeable. Yes, in fact, some I, of them gone quite off the deep end. <laughs> quite off. No, the no, deep that's end. just the average Magic the Gathering player experience. You know, <laughs> oh, you're just like, sure. oh, it's a casual thing. I'll just pick up like some supplemental product. It's nothing, and then you're like, okay, now I'm knee deep in it. What's yeah. a, a pack? A pack here, a precon there, a booster box, a booster box, a collector booster. Oh, there's a Lord of the Rings set now. Okay, I guess I'm spending a stupid amount of money on that. That's my experience. That's I got tattoos. Get you. He didn't yeah, get tattoos. I, I was going to bring that up. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, that's the the, uh, the Dominary United stained glass yep. mana symbols. Yep. That's how much it meant to you, dude. You got inked up for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean. It, it it flows with all my other tattoos. I mean, I have Assassin's Creed and Gears of War. I have Mega Man. It was not a it was not a far leap, and it was kind of one of those things where it's like, ah, it's been like six months, and I've spent over a thousand dollars on this, and I spend a lot of my time <laughs> thinking about this. Oh yeah, not going anywhere at least soon, right? No. no. You realize you spend a lot more time thinking about it than than you previously thought you would, right? I, I, I've been a board game fan for a long time. I've been a D and D fan for a long time. I think about those when they're appropriate to think about. Like, oh, I've got a D and D game coming up. Oh, my friends want to do some board games this weekend. Magic. It's like, oh, I could build a new deck. Or oh, look, uh, this this popular uh, gameplay just pop dropped another one. Guess I'll spend an hour and a half watching that. Yeah, because I I've I've never seen a commander game. You never know. Um, that's a, that is what we call in the business a lie. Mm. We've definitely seen a commander game once or twice, but typical. We bring yes. you on, we bring you on as there's been a big event in the world of Magic the Gathering with modern Commander Horizon Masters 3. Of course. It's a very big event in the world. A uh, lot of very expensive cards running around and very expensive packs some of which we have pulled. Have you opened up any Modern Horizons 3 yet? Uh, no. My LGS has them, but they were like, it's two packs for 20 bucks. And I was like, while that is a very good deal, um, I would just <laughs> rather buy singles that I need to finish other decks. And that's the way you're supposed to do it, and not get $70 pre-release kits. Yeah. Well, this is like, you know, years of, of doing just that. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I, I have convinced myself many times to just dive in and buy like a lot of product and then mm-hmm. i'm just like I'm, I'm gonna do so much stuff with it it's definitely gonna get used and you know then later you're like i could Got just spend the money and finish this deck that's been sitting on my table for <laughs> months okay. now so i've got we, okay so one, two, three, uh, i don't know like a 10 to 11 completed decks and then the, the various boxes yeah. of like, oh, I want to build around this, and here's five cards that I happen to have that go with it. Yeah. That that is exactly how it starts. <laughs> you find something you like, and you look it up, and you're like, oh, I have at least three of these cards, and <laughs> you're like, I could put this together, no problem. Literally, I've been sitting on a Judith Carnage Carnis- Connoisseur, Judith, no, Rakdos no. Burn be- with three cards, a Soul Ring, and two Mountains. So perfect start. You're already halfway ready. there. I'm basically ready to play CEDH with her. Uh, <laughs> you know, shake up the format a little bit. That's also my favorite. One of my favorite things is when it's like, okay, open, especially because we opened so much product. A little less here recently, but we've been opening up so much product. It's like, oh, this is a really cool commander, like Judith. And then you put her aside, and you're like, also, I have the two full art mountains from this set, so I'll just put them in here as well. Yeah, and that's the. <laughs> oh, I got Voya, Jaws of the Conclave. That's a really powerful boogeyman in whoa, Commander whoa, right now. Hey now. I'll Shh, build around don't that. Don't speak its name here. Ward Ward yeah. Three. Uh, oh, card draw and damage. 
I don't know, a commander? That card's gonna ruin the format, in case you guys didn't know. Um, that... <laughs> I am much less worried about it than... The, I'm much less worried about Voya as compared to Nadu right now. <laughs> Not Ulamog? Come on now. Annihilator I... X? Are you kidding me? Uh, it's a lot of mana. I'm more scared Oh, of yeah, that's... I forget that's always the problem in Commander games, is how much mana you can make. Right. <laughs> I know, right? No way. There's no way to generate a lot of mana very quickly at all. No. At all. That's why Dockside is so good. He makes like an entire treasure at least. So it's exactly. just you know, that's a massive amount of Probably just break it even with it most times. Right. <laughs> totally not. Totally. But literally, Nadu, three mana, and you're just going to be digging through the top of your deck. You're not going to be triggering like card draw pings from like an Orcish Bowmasters or anything. So it because like, cards are just going into your hand or lands onto the battlefield untapped. I believe it, that Nadu is a direct result of Orcish Bowmaster. Like, they don't want to get rid of it in modern, so they're mm -hmm. like, okay, most of the cards we're going to print going forward, we're not going to specifically mention card draw. Also, mm -hmm. it's Simic. Like, I I've yeah. had a running theory since I've gotten back into Magic, is that everyone at Wizards is secretly just a Simic player, and they're just <laughs> like, okay, yeah. we'll just kind of sneak in all the really good Simic cards, and no one oh, will yeah. notice. Because you had, like, you had Oko, you had, uh, there was a, when I first started, well, one of the first sets I really, really dove in, they had, like, I think it was Hydroid Crisis, it was, like, absolutely crazy, and then Coma, uh, oh, yeah, Coma. is good, like, all Simic stuff. Even with the MH3 Commander decks, like, Omo is arguably the most powerful commander of the four. I mean, Ulalek is obviously ridiculous, but I you've think got you to mean, build uh, an Eldrazi deck. Ulalek! Ulalek! <laughs> I'm so uh, that that's one of those things that people are going to be like, oh my god, that's hilarious, or someone's going to, or some like white girl is going to try and cancel me for using that accent. Anyway, worth it. <laughs> it's a good bit. <laughs> it I, is. I, I will. I will risk my entire reputation for an okay bit. Okay. I mean, you got to commit. You got. You have to. You have to. If you don't commit to it, then you're just being racist. <laughs> But, at least, no, it's not racist, it's fine. Yeah. I completely, Ulalek, very powerful. You gotta build Eldrazi. Disa, neat. You gotta make Tarmogoyfs, I guess. But again, you gotta build Goyfs. You gotta build energy. Whereas Omo, it's just like, oh, this is this is a great put in the 99 commander. Or, even, like, even a good, even a good piece for, like, turning on Tron lands, or just mm -hmm. anything that cares about land types is... Well, it's like, it was friend... really one of those... Don't, one of the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it's really one it. of those sleeper things where we you don't the, realize the, like, just little... how powerful, like, an everything counter is mm -hmm. until you see someone else, like, kind of put the wheels in motion, or you just kind of play yeah. it yourself, and you're just kind of slowly picking up, like, oh, this, this now combos with this, or this yeah. stacks onto this, and and then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, this deck's broken in half. Even just from one of the most simple ways of doing it, and it's like, oh, let's just just jam a bunch of the best anthem making creatures in the colors mm -hmm. and put everything counters on them, and then suddenly they're all getting anthems from each other and layering on top of each other. And each like that's... soldier you control, which includes this, 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 and uh, yeah, yeah, it includes this bird token that I made. That's your bird Extra soldier. Bird soldier, bird, your bird soldier, Lurgoyf, Cephalid, which is now an octopus, Kraken, yeah, you know, just whatever you need, just all, just all of the things, and it just enab it just enables so much, and because Simic My needs thing more. is that she was supposed to be like the helm of the host, like that's what everyone was right? really excited about. They're like helm yeah. of the host, so you think she's gonna make tokens, like non legendary legendary tokens or something, but they're yeah. just like, no, nah, she just makes everything, everything else. You're like, gotta, should she have been a shapeshifter? Like, should you yeah. have done more with the shapeshifter aspect and not... Because even her visual thing is, like, double. Like, she looks like mm -hmm. she's two. I, mean, she, I, I, th I think the shapeshifter creature type is more just like, oh, we're trying to get a flavor win of, like, she can be everything. Yeah. And so she's able to make everything else everything. But again, I, I was also disappointed by a lack of Helm of the Host, but I, I'm also sure they wouldn't want to print Helm of the Host into modern 
right now. Well, not only that, I mean, they just, uh, the energy one does something similar. Mm -hmm. Just not yeah. legendary tokens. But that's yeah. that seems to be a reoccurring theme right now that we're in, in white and red, is all about making tokens that will, like, just go away unless you do X, or they just yeah. go away in general. Yeah, I built so, uh, I built Cadric, which is that same idea of he says token not uh, token creatures or tokens you control don't follow the legend rule, and uh, yeah, like I built that a year ago, two yeah, about a year ago, and all of a sudden yeah, it's like all these different ones are coming down there. It's like oh, if I just went into Mardu, then I could have this very similar thing, or if I went into um, uh, uh, Jeskai, I could do a very similar thing, or if I went in like <sighs> best color combination, the best win just Jeskai. Um, I, it's funny you say that because literally one of the decks that I was just talking about that I have unfinished right here is a Rabo Soul Tender Elena Mardu deck that has Kadric in it and yeah. Radadrabic and it's basically like this thing where I'm going to spam out legendary tokens and Radadrabic doesn't specifically say non-token creatures so like Ooh. if they're legendary and they die then Radadrabic still sees them dies and makes mm -hmm. the zombies for them Yep. So, yep. in I'm my head, that. I was just like, "That's the coolest thing." <laughs> right? Well, I when I when I saw Radadravic, I I immediately jammed him into my very very shockingly low power Joe to the Unifier deck. Oh yeah, <laughs> super cash. Well, I'm basically jamming the pr the Painbow precon mana base. And then it's just Joda, and then whatever interesting legendary creatures I happen to have that I'd rather be in him than just in a binder or in a box, you know? Yeah. So it's just like a rotating cast of legendary creatures that I also don't ever play. I was going to say, you haven't played that one in probably in several months, a at least. Uh, probably because it's very powerful, and especially just a one-on-one, -on -one, there's no one else to keep it in check. That's why I, I don't play it on Monday Night Magic, for sure. Yeah. I have a uh, I have a a friend of mine who I play with a lot of the time, and uh, he has like several very powerful decks. So mm -hmm. anytime we play together in a group, if he pulls one of those out, I have to immediately start politicking turn one. I'm like, all right, look, guys, I know you don't think so right now, but he will be the threat. <laughs> it doesn't matter what goes on; he will end up being the threat. This is what Sam is starting to have to do as yeah. I made Abdel Adrian Candlekeep Sage. Uh, right? And so it's just, it's, it's just blink. It's flicker. It's fine. Oh, I drew a couple cards. I made a couple soldiers. It's fine. Oh, I'm blinking again. I'm drawing more cards. I'm making more soldiers. Also, there's a Felidar Guardian now. Don't pay any mind to what I am doing. I'm playing Solitaire. Yeah. Oh, suddenly now I'm bouncing all of your boards and I have seven 26, 26 soldiers. Anyway, carry on. It's one of those also, things where... It's let me just speed run the initiative real quick. If that's what Literally. Like. <laughs> that's That was the last time I won with this deck was I... So I have... We talked about this the, in the last podcast. I played original Theros, and I went to a local game store when I was in college, and I won the door prize, which was the From the Vault 20 box. And in that box, you had, like, Jace the Mind Sculptor, but it also had Venser Shaper Savant, and he finally now has a home. So... I reached the point where it's just like, oh, okay, I'm going to get Born Upon the Wind. I'll cast Born Upon the Wind. The loop of flickers will let me basically draw my entire deck. I don't have, like, a Thoracle combo in here, even though I very easily could. And I have my entire deck in my hands. I'll use Venser to just bounce all my card draw things back so I don't deck myself. And now all of your shit's gone, and my army can just win immediately. Yeah, it's like we got our couple of friends, you know, the, the guys we play with cat, or, uh, pretty commonly, and the first time, I think they've each, Salem and Darren have each played against this once now, and both times ha I have to sit here and be like, I think, you know, they might, they might come up with a piece of interaction, it's like, it needs to be pointed over there, and they're like, but, but that doesn't, that, but, but if I remove that, then he just gets all his things back, and I'm like, exactly, <laughs> that is exactly what will happen, I yes. just get it all back. That's why I like this, it's just, it's built-in protection for basically my entire board. Well, and then we had exactly. uh, we had a buddy who uh, very new to Magic, and uh, you're like, okay, I'm gonna play this deck. And I'm sitting there like, okay, you know, every turn basically, I'm like, hmm, I don't think he's gonna go infinite yet. And this guy's just sitting here like, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. And then you go infinite, 
Yeah. And he's like, whoa, was that an Ill- was that are those those cards illegal? Like, I don't care if we play with illegal cards. And we're like, no, that's just No, like, that's that's just that he's very he's like, I have a precon and I've bought like five cards to put in it level magic player right now. See that right there? That's the fledgling stage. Yeah. What's gonna happen now is he's gonna shed that outer layer, and that's when you have to kind of worry. Because that's when they start looking at playing really mean decks that they don't realize mm. just how be- like how mean yeah. they can get. Yeah, like that's where you end up with people who play like they're like, I want to make it to where other people can't play and interrupt me, and then they play it and they're like, they either love it and they become you know that's that just person. the path they choose in life, or they're <laughs> like, ah, okay, it was fun to do it once, but um, I'd rather do something else. At least nowadays, stacks like isn't nearly as powerful as it used to be no. like there's just so many ways around it the only the only card that and we've had this discussion before about cdh specifically and what cards we would ban we basically agreed like don't really ban anything yeah because like it, they all seem fine the only one that i would ban is Draneth magistrate just because when you it's two mana you play it and then suddenly this game of commander is remove the Draneth magistrate because nobody can play their commanders but and that's, that's like the one good stacks piece they have now. Exactly, exactly. And it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm also, I'm also of the mind like we should probably unban some shit before we start banning things in Commander. Personally. Oh well, I think some things could like Flash could probably stay banned at least for a little bit longer till more stuff gets figured out because mm-hmm. the Flash Hulk meta of CEDH, in my opinion, like watching the games. Like, right now, it's, of course, you know, everyone talks about the two-card combo with Dasa and Demonic Consultation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And sure, you do see games in that way occasionally, but I consume a fair bit of CEDH content, and that's not always the way the games end. Mm -hmm. Like, some of my favorite decks to watch in CEDH are, like, Godo or Magda. Um, Like, just the mono red. Even Slicer is fun, because you just watch people pass it around, and then immediately they're all talking, like, okay... Look, yeah. I have to hit you with this, because if I hit him with this, you're going to hit him with this, and then he's going to be out of the game. So, yeah. I, I'm i working on a Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow, C- baby's first CEDH deck. Our friend Lincoln is a big CEDH player. He's been on playing with power, actually. And um, my, it's... Playing with power. I've met I've met Ryan at playing with power. Dude is awesome. He handed me his Godo deck and then let me sit down in a pod with him and our friend Lincoln and some other guy who I don't remember his name, and let me play my first CEDH game at SCG Con Cincinnati. And he was like, "Here's my Godo deck. Be careful. It's not all proxies. So there's actually some very expensive things in there." I was like, "Oh." So I was like very gentle with the cards <laughs> the whole time. I ended up winning because it was just Godo, and I happened to get. I got a cavern of souls in my opening hand and a gemstone cavern and like mm. sit, like just a whole bunch of mana ramps. So I was like, all right, I pregame action. I start with a gemstone cavern and then my next turn I have a cavern of souls. And then suddenly five turns later, it's like, okay, I tap my cavern of souls and I cast Godo and Ryan's like, Lincoln, you said you had a, you had a, you had an answer for this, right? And Lincoln's like, yeah, I got an answer for it. No problem. He's like, okay, cool. I'll pass priority. Oh, I'll pass priority. Lincoln's like, all right, I'm going to counterspell it. And, I'm like, and they both go like, no, he used the cavern of souls. You can't. And then I ended God. up winning and I was like, yay. <laughs> what a rush. <laughs> right? And then the next SCG con I was playing with Lincoln, I was playing O'Hare Axanel, and I got stuck on two lands for seven turns in a two land starting hand with a freaking arcane signet. And I'm like, I'll be fine. Yeah, never punished. Variance is a bitch. <laughs> Variance is a fucking bitch. Especially like when you start creeping up in pat. Like, that's one of the funniest things to me is when you start creeping up in CEDH, like when you start getting up in there, because they cut so many lands, because they're just like, mm-hmm. there's mana rocks, there's all this other stuff. You can watch people literally get stuck on, like, one land. Their hand can be explosive, and they were just like, oh, it's one land and a mana rock, you know, I'll be fine, and then they never hit that next piece. I've got I've got a fetch, I've got a chrome mox, and I've got a mystic remora. What could go wrong? I've, uh, I've been, I've been watching a lot of uh, can, uh, Canlander, Canadian Highlander recently, and then listen to them talk about how their decks work. And they're like, yeah, my deck's a little lean. Uh, I'm running 27 lands. And it's like, oh, you're yeah, you're down from 29. <laughs> and it's like, Canadian Highlander, still a 100-card format, 
but it's like all their the 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 i mean obviously it's one on one so you need less but it's like yeah everything is so much cheaper four drops are mostly the top end like kappa cannoneer is the only uh, i think six or seven drop that people run and they're never casting for but six even or seven then it has improvised yeah yeah exactly exact and so it's like then yeah to turn and, and go like for when i'm building a casual deck which are all my decks it's like all right i have 37 lands maybe need one more can't go below that i'll die dude like there were which de- which deck was it that just wasn't working because it didn't have enough lands in it and it had like 35 lands oh. was it my equipment deck yes yeah yeah, yeah they- you had changed that recently yeah, and I have I have this like really janky equipment deck because I just happen to have a um Oh my god. Jesus Christ. I can never remember the names of my goddamn cards. Aster, bearer of blades, thank you. Jesus. Gotcha. I had ast- I had an Aster, I pulled it from Dominaria United and I had some equipment and I just slowly have been piecing it together with stuff that I've been pulling from packs. And I'm like, oh, this is, like, janky. It's super casual. It's totally fine. Uh, also, I can't ever cast anything. What the fuck is going on? And I counted the lands. I'm like, I have 35 lands. This shouldn't be a problem at all. And I added, like, two. And it's been totally fine ever since. It, it's it's so crazy just how big a difference the land count can make because yeah. I had the same problem. In, uh, so the first real commander deck I ever had was a Marin. Mm-hmm. Uh reanimator yeah reanimator and it was not very fun for everybody eventually i became <laughs> like the most the, everyone was like take him out first if you don't it, it's just but the thing is it didn't win fast it just grinded everyone down mm-hmm. um so i was like okay the next deck i build is going to be fast and i'll focus on that so i built rakdos lord of riots and that was super fun because you get to drop all these really big things and you're dealing damage and Things are coming in and all this other stuff. And that one, I wanted to see how far I could take it. So I kept buying upgrades for it. And every time I would start going through the deck and be like, well, I want to keep this because I've had fun doing that and this and that. So I would cut lands. Yeah. And eventually it got to the point where I had like 34 lands. And if I did not open with the four needed to play Rakdos, (laughs) it probably was not going to happen that I would get him. Why can't I cast my commander anymore? I think that was like... The the first lesson I learned, you know, like you're saying, in the fledgling stage when we start to build decks, there are so many things that we all get wrong, and uh, it's like, uh, you know, you know, there's some pretty obvious ones like you're not running. Well, one is a big one is you're not running land, you're not running card draw, you're not running interaction, you're just running seven drops, and I think that lands one was the first one I like I took to heart. I was watching the command zone, and that was and that was like one of the first episodes I watched where they're like, yeah, thirty seven lands is really good. Otherwise, you can't cast yourself. And I was like, all right, I'll learn that lesson. It's taken me forever to learn the others, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I was quick on the card draw. Mm-hmm. Um, even in, like, my, my first deck that I assembled outside of a pre-con for Commander, which was um, Edgar the Charmed Groom, just Orja Vampires, because I pulled an Edgar the Charmed Groom. He's not even close to the best Vampire Commander in Orja. But I was like, oh, okay, I really want to jam card draw. So I got a, I had a lot of the cantrips that were like, as an additional cost, sacrifice a creature because he makes the one one tokens. Or like, I had a skull clamp from a pre from the precon that I got. And so like, just card draw, card draw, card draw. And I think for a long time that masked the fact that I was running like thirty two to thirty five lands in my deck. Yeah, <laughs> because I was at least able to just churn through it enough and hit a land drop sometimes. Oh yeah, well when you get. If you're low enough to the ground, it really doesn't affect the deck that much. But, like, that is the next building block because, again, when you when you play more with it, you start to realize that, like, certain things are there for a specific reason. Like, again, me and my buddy were playing one night, and it was... We were both playing Drain decks, but he's playing an Orzhov, uh Elias Ilkor. Uh, this Disney Love Pilgrim, and I'm playing Shire Shizo's Caretaker. It's just mm-hmm. mono black. I just wanted it to be like a drain and gain type deal. So, as we're playing, his deck's like slowly pulling ahead because he has white to kind of off balance everything. But the problem was, at a certain point in the game, he ran out of card draw. Oh, and my yeah. deck is full of little things that die and draw cards or enter the battlefield and draw cards. So I would mm-hmm. just sack them and then bring them all back. So I'm just sitting there with like a full grip always. 
and just slowly over time I just started pulling ahead and then finally I was able to get out like a, a semi infinite combo where it was just like draining so much. Non deterministic combo. Yeah. 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 It wasn't infinite. I'm not a monster in that one. <laughs> I am. I accidentally <laughs> included an infinite combo. <laughs> I built. Okay, so you, are you familiar with uh, Yaris Roar the Old Gods from uh, Murders of Carlo Manor? It's the the one, gruel one. The gruel one that when it gives all your creatures haste and face down creatures yep. when they deal yep. damage, you draw a card, and if they die, you get to flip them for free. So I have Yaris. And I included Ashnod's Altar because, oh, I want a sack outlet. It'll generate me mana. I can sack these face down creatures, get them to flip for free. Um, there's this Phoenix that is a morph creature that when it flips face up, it deals two damage to everyone. And when it dies, uh, it returns to the battlefield face down. Right. So. <sighs> yeah. I happened upon this combo in a game we were playing where I had Yaris out and I had Ashnod's altar out, or I had Ashnod's in my hand and I had the Phoenix face down and I checked it. I kept going back and checking it. And Sam was just kind of like looking at me and I'm like, I think I accidentally can go infinite and win on my turn. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't I'm mean like, to. This is like kind of one of your like most... Uh, fair decks, like one of your Literally. most like wholesome magic decks, <laughs> right. and you're like, I, I think I'm gonna win on infinite combo. And you're like, I need. You're like, let's. Is this how this works? And we like, huh? I, I was literally like, okay, I cast Ashnod's Altar. All right, I'm going to present what I think is a loop here. Tell me if this works how I think it will. I sack this creature that flips, it deals everyone two damage. I sack it again, and it returns face down, and then I sack it again, and it's just over and over and over again. Man, there's th something similar you can do if there's a there's a green morph creature mm -hmm. that you can flip up for revealing a, a green card. So if you had that, you could still you just generate infinite green mana, mm -hmm. and you can yeah. use or infinite any color if you have a Phyrexian altar because you're just flipping it and filling it and flipping it and filling it. And Listen, and I don't forth. I don't know what kind of money you think I have. I have Ashnod's altar money. I don't have Phyrexian altar money. Okay. Well, okay. Look right there on the <laughs> wall. I could see you have Phyrexian altar money. <laughs> False. <laughs> pulled all those. Pulled everything on this wall from a pack. Everything. This this mana crypt, this this beautiful two hundred dollar mana crypt that I have here. I went to Walmart and I was getting things and I'm like, ah, wow, there's some Lost Caverns of Ixalan packs here. I'm gonna get like three of those and I'll just open them up while I have dinner. That's a treat. Yeah, and I was talking to my partner and she she and I were having a conversation on the phone and I was like eating, we were chatting, and I'm like, Oh, I've got these packs I'm gonna open while we're talking and we were talking and I opened, and I was like, Oh my god, oh my god. She's like, What? What happened? She was like, I I I knew you either got something good or like something had gone horribly wrong with them. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yeah, I just I pulled the most expensive card in the set <laughs> that you could possibly get. Yeah, for real. Yeah, and the same with that Jeweled Lotus and I've Orcish Bowmasters. I've opened so much Lord So Rings, if you so. wanted one, you could potentially get one. Yeah, I just got a, I just got, what is it, Modern Masters? What what set has, what's the most recent set that has Phyrexian Altar? I don't even know. I'm just going by my vague memory of the set symbol. I'm like, yeah, I'll just get, I'll just get like it's a case of, those, of that. one of those, something, yeah. whatever. Get a booster box of that and I'll probably open it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So, just a small booster box. It's just a treat. small one. Just a, just, just a little treat. Just a little, If you want a little treat, go spend $40 on an Aftermath booster. Because while it's not necessarily monetarily worth it, you're not going to be able to get a booster box of anything for $40. And you might get lucky and hit one or two of, one or two of the cards that pay for the box. So, I mean, I'd be happy just... I think almost all the legendary creatures from Aftermath mm -hmm. make awesome commanders. My like, my favorite pet deck is my Narset Enlightened Exile Jeskai Prowess Cast Free Things from Graveyards deck. It's so fun. It is by far my favorite, one of my most powerful, and it's the one that I have in the fancy deck box forever and always, because I love it so much. That's the one you can cast other people's spells too, right? Out of other Yeah. Yeah. That Just right any... there, one of my favorite things. I know a lot of people aren't really always the coolest with people who play steel theft decks. Cat 
fact, that's my bread and butter. That's like, I get so much joy out of doing that. Yeah. It, I can take it out of your hand, I'll take it off the field, I'll Thank dig you. it out of your graveyard. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you don't want to use, yeah, well, you know, worry. let me try it. One man's trash, another man's treasure. Jester, I will fuck you up. That's not true. I, that that cat faces no consequences for yeah, sure. She was bad at cables, and I'm like, I swear to God, if you turn off our fucking camera again <laughs> in the middle of the podcast, <laughs> I swear, I swear. It is a very jester thing to do, though. I I shouldn't have named her that. <laughs> I was just, I was asking for trouble when I did that, for sure. So we could just continue on down this rabbit hole if you want, but of course, yeah, yeah. One of one of the things that made me want to talk to you is you've started to much like us move away from tiktok in some ways like we still mm -hmm. we all still do stuff but it's not like our primary platform that we would all create on anymore and you've been making deck techs on youtube and you've yes. been seeing a fair bit of success with that you already have over a thousand subscribers i assume you're close to the youtube partner program i am actually in it currently hey. yeah uh my um, Zagreus Thief of Blood deck, mm -hmm. for some reason, like, it, it's probably one of the ones, like, I was most proud of making it, so it kind of makes sense, but, like, that one, for some reason, just, like, caught on, took off, right. and it, it, I mean, it's not, like, viral or anything, but, like, 18,000 was a number that I had not seen on YouTube, so I was just like, oh my god, this one's doing numbers, and because <laughs> right. of that, like, that one boosted it enough to where I, I met the hour requirement and everything like that. But That's now I've kind of fallen into yeah. a different problem where I'm like, I'm possibly having to look at maybe getting an editor because when I started the YouTube deck techs, my job was very lax. I didn't have to do a whole lot. I just was mostly present and I would go and do whatever I needed to do. And then afterwards it was back to just monitoring. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where I could really like sit and work out scripts and on my lunch or my breaks I would work on editing and I would get plenty of time to to do that well I had a job change still at the same place but just a different position and that took away like all that extra time mm. so now I'm like on the razor's edge each week of like trying to get something wrote, record it cut it down, edit it work on the next thing so I can get that out and make a script and, and just, I keep falling further and further behind. That is, that is the classic YouTube conundrum Yeah, for so many people. Cause like we <sighs> making YouTube videos is fucking so much harder than people give it credit for. And we were very close to being in the YouTube partner program. Cause we were like, we had hit, the the watch hour threshold and we just needed subscribers mm -hmm. um because we did we made two youtube we made two D, D videos one of them uh we were talking about spell points the spell point system in D, &D uh specifically applying it to the warlock because it wouldn't normally apply to the warlock and then the other one i did on the math behind uh great weapon master and sharpshooter and that kind of stuff and like when to take like the super like the minus five for the plus 10 damage and all the yeah. math around that and those two videos did really really well i mm -hmm. think they're at like 80 and fifty thousand views each so yeah, like crazy. they did really well and i was not in a good relationship at the time and there were just a myriad of factors of just it became so hard to just make the next video and that's kind of still the rut that at least I feel like I am in. Uh, just actually, just today, I finished a deck tech video for my Mardu Vampires deck. Um, because, I mean, obviously Edgar Markov is like the premier Mardu Vampire. And he's $120 or something fucking ridiculous like that. And so if you want... Well, eminence is pretty strong. It is. It is. <laughs> But in Mardu Colors, there is an option where you can get some 1-1 one, one token generation and then have the upside of a commander in the command zone that can also reanimate because I rule zero to Edgar the Charmed Groom and Olivia the Crimson Bride, both from Crimson Val, made them partner with commanders for each other because thematically it makes sense. 
Yeah. I, if it were a commander set that they would have came out in, I guarantee they would have had Barton. I, I've been saying this on so many episodes of this podcast, not bonus action, the supplement podcast, but the regular podcast, like, they need to be throwing around the partner with mechanic with reckless abandon, I feel like. Like, way more than they should. Like, there's no reason we couldn't be having, like, in the Lord of the Rings set, the Legolas counter of kills, Gimli counter of kills. That should have been, like, a cool, what would Partners it be? Partners with. Teamer. Uh, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I 100% agree, because right. that's, I think Wizards is afraid, or not maybe afraid, but, like, they're nervous about printing any more specific just vague partners because yeah. all the other partners have been so broken mm -hmm. over the years, especially in CEDH. You don't really see a whole lot of partners mm -hmm. outside of CEDH. And but yeah. Well, I mean, like, they're all just, and all, like, it seems like all the popular partners in CEDH are just value commanders, yeah, like Tim Necrom, like Thrasios. Yeah. It's, all it's all just, here's card draw. Here's dig through your deck. Here's a mana outlet. That's literally all they are. But then, yeah, all the all the specific partners, even when you get those set specific partner with mechanics that, or partner mechanics as like uh, backgrounds and and uh, and legends or the friends forever yeah. from Stranger Things or things like that. It's like okay, now we start opening it up to like more combinations. And sure, they are very powerful still because you have two cards in the command zone. Mm -hmm. But they're cool. They're very cool. That's what makes backgrounds so powerful as well. It's like so commanders. There's two of them. But I cannot my, one of my personal favorite sets was Battle Bond. And mm -hmm. they had the partners with, like, building those two, like, Virtus the Veiled and Gorn the Great, or the uh, Red Knight and the Dragon that gives Knights Vigilance and Dragons Double Strike, or, you know, vice versa. And just seeing those color pairings and partners with. I think opens up a, a bigger space uh, for really cool interactions to happen without getting into the weeds of this is just a general partner that you can just put with anything. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. So I treat I treat those vampires as partner with, and every time I bust it out of the table, people are always like, "Yeah, that sounds awesome," and it always play it plays super fun because you don't feel like. You don't feel like your your commander is overwhelming to the table because you don't have eminence. It's very easy to get Edgar out, Edgar the Charmed Groom out fairly early and then sacrifice him or throw him at a big creature to block or just start sending him everywhere until someone destroys him. So he flips to his backside, starts making tokens, can sacrifice the tokens just like he can with Edgar Markov. You, I, I include a lot of like bigger vampires and discard effects. So like um, like a demand answers where I can discard mm -hmm. like a butcher of Malakir into my graveyard, and then later I cast Olivia, and then I pull the butcher of Malakir out for free, tapped and attacking, and it's just and it's kind of what that's I think what so fun. A lot of people wanted from the original Edgar Markov, maybe it was designed around to be the vampire commander, but then you know obviously with that eminence ability. It's now just play whatever cheap vampire you can and flood the board as opposed to, yeah, get to play all your cool vampires. Mm -hmm. Like one of the big bombs in the deck, the one of the boogeyman men of that deck is Asterion the Decadent from Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah, Gate. I could see that. Just because, like, he's six mana. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be casting him from my hand, probably. But, he, but casting my commander and then getting him onto the battlefield immediately... Probably when I'm already dealing a lot of damage or if I'm on my last legs, like getting some lifelink happening and then doubling all of that. And he himself is a win con and a great it, it's such a fun deck. I finished the script for that at work today. I have the a deck list made because I want I've tried to make it I tried to make it forty five dollars. Including the commanders, not including basic lists. <laughs> actually, actually, Moxfield has it basic lands included in the price and it's like 45 and some change and i just wanted to be even like even still basic lands are just like I, they're like a throwaway thing they're literally. like when when you build budget as you know from a lot of my deck techs that's pretty much all i do is build yeah. budget decks i try to keep everything under 30 mm -hmm. i really don't like to get even close to it i prefer like 25 and under because i i have this opinion where it's like 
if you wanted to get someone into the game, if you went up to someone and you were like, hey, you need to buy this pre-con so we can play, I mean, of course, most commander players have spare decks <laughs> that, you know, you could just lend to them and try it that way. But I know, some, I know some people who are like, hey, uh, I don't really want to do that. Like, I kind of want to do my own thing or own the cards or whatever. I want to make it to where, you know, you just throw a 20 at it, boom, it's yours. These are the cards. You're going to get to play with it. And you don't really miss a 20. Yeah. You know, it's like, all right, well, I spent 20 bucks on it, and, you know, now I'll get to play with my friends when they go to the LGS or we meet up somewhere or something like that. Because you know? that's mostly what Commander is for a lot of people is just, like, the social aspect. Uh, it's getting together and, and playing with your friends and just enjoying the game that way. Jester, do you like Wyatt's deck techs? I'm going to take that as a yes. All right, get out of here. Of course. <sighs> arousing arousing uh, endorsement. <laughs> she's, she's a woman of many words, what can I say? And she loves hopping on the table around 7 p.m. because that's dinner time, and she's like, all right, get the fuck done with what you're doing so you can feed me, you heathens. Um, I, I completely lost the thread. As, that's always how this goes. Cheap deck decks. Cheap but deck yeah, decks. That, I also, uh, I've, I've heard other people with kind of that same sentiment of, uh, I think one of the guys on EDH Rec, he, all, he's like, yeah, whenever, he's like, I built, I always have a Marwin the Nurturer deck. Why? One Marwin is monocolored. It's simple to learn. It's like, you know, there's not too much trickery in there. And he's like, yeah, and I can build the entire thing for like you were saying for like twenty bucks, and then go to the LGS or like uh, somebody comes over for the first time. It's like, oh hey, I, I I'm kind of interested. He's like, here, take this. It's very simple to learn. Start playing. All right, well thanks for this. And he's like, no, no, just keep it. It's like twenty bucks. It's twenty bucks, and then I'll mm -hmm. build just build another one. Just always have it ready to go to hand off to somebody. That's cool. It's so funny that elves are so many people's intro into the game. Like, because I know. Three of the people that I taught how to play Magic all started with elf decks. Two mono green and one Golgari. And there's so many people in Magic uh, MTG TikTok that also will cite uh, the Kaldheim um, Golgari elves as like one of their starting decks or one that of their first forays into Commander. Yeah, Lathril. Mm. I, have, I have a Lathril deck. I chose Simic. <laughs> Ugh, Simic elves. Cause they I love Simic. Simic I, I know that help. it's full of degenerate stuff, but like Simic is fun to build when you're taking a specific direction. Yes. Yeah, my because my two are are Ivy and uh, Elrond. Elrond the scry the scry. So I have uh, no no points scrying over spilled elves. And uh, love it. And then Ivy is my is my mutate and copy and Aura's deck. It's a little it's a little over all, all over the place, but it works well. Um, the names you come up with, I just... The names are the best part. Exactly. That's exactly. that's what gives the deck personality. Really? Like, if, you were that... pull up, if you pull up my mox field, it, it yeah. says budget deck, then name, but then afterwards in parentheses is where I put the real name of the deck. <laughs> I love that. The only one that I have a name for, really, is my, um, is my vampire one. It's just uh, Markov Wedding. Um, and that's not very interesting. Nope. I I've I played around with Abdel Adrian being uh, blink and you'll miss us, but that's a whole other. Look, I don't it give may in. be a classic, but it's a classic for a reason. You know? <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be ridiculous over here. I'm just trying to just trying to keep it chill, low key, if you will. I'm yeah, known exactly. for being very low key of a person. <laughs> so, Wyatt. Yes. At this point, you're going to Gen Con? I am not, unfortunately. I, I'm sorry. I just talked about I have this. A, I know, but I got. I have not only my job, but um, I'm the sole provider for my family, and Ooh, got we wait. have a baby on the way. So hey, congratulations! Very nice. Yeah, thank you. Ooh, uh, I'm, I've got, I've got and, a wife and kids. Ooh, yeah, I can't go have fun. I have, and you know, my son, my <laughs> wife, and my son are like my world right now, and I'm trying to spend as much time with him and her as I can before the baby gets here, and then I'll be in overdrive dad mode, trying to help with everybody. And, Classic. 
fine, fine, fine. We'll be a father. <laughs> we will Fucking we nerd. will work to make our uh, a successful company and then hire you and then we'll pay you to go to Gen Con in, in exactly. ten that's years. How's that sound? Uh, who needs, who that's needs an really editor what I'm just working you. towards. <laughs> I'm just waiting for companies to start reaching out and being like, hey, you seem mentally stable. Why don't you <laughs> go down to one of these cons and we'll pay for you to go? And I'll be like, all right, cool. Wyatt, I want to I wanna clue you into something here. I don't know if this would help because obviously travel and accommodation. Um, we applied for press passes and I got one. I did not. Sam didn't. Which I found interesting because we submitted the same links and the same channels and the same pages at so the I same time. At the same time, when so you I don't say know. press pass, does that mean you have to cover the event or are you just going? No, I'm just going. Yeah. Oh, okay. They I just gave it, they just gave me a pass. I think you also technically can use cameras in certain situations where they tell you to turn off cameras, but yes. other than that, yeah, it's like you get to go for free, pretty much. So we're splitting the cost of one ticket. Uh, we got it on Bogo, apparently. <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. But you know, something to look into. Something to look into, because yeah, I will definitely keep that in mind. Cause... We want to play. We want to play in person, and I feel like Gen Con's one of the few places where that will will be able to That's, happen. Yeah. Or we could we could make good on our on our promises to many people of actually playing spell table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and doing that. Correctly. Look, I'm telling y'all, a Patreon tier where y'all play with. You know, patreon.com slash the dungeon bros for those that might be plug. interested. For those that might be interested. Uh, I feel like a spell table tier would be appropriate because we have we have three tiers. The dollar tier of just like, thank you. Uh, the five dollar tier, we're trying to like jam pack with like all the value, you know, the early ad free access to the podcast. Mm -hmm. This is becoming an ad for our own Patreon. The early ad free access to the podcast. <laughs> plug Kitty. it. Plug it. The the at the access to the, every everyone you can follow us for free on patreon everyone gets access to the feed but you don't get to watch everything unless you are a paid member um and then we have a 15 dollars tier where that's where like you get your name shout out at the end of the, the episode of the podcast and videos and all that kind of stuff but i feel like that could we could also make like a spell table tier something like i think that. that that's like a, a perfect thing especially for like the content that y'all do because if y'all were to incorporate patreon games on mm -hmm. Friday Night Magic, where y'all stream it, like Monday Night Magic, it would be we, we play Magic. Like... Wyatt, I love you, but we play Magic on Monday. Monday, fake, Monday Night Magic, fake fan. We're, we're not loading Ray Run. We don't do Friday Night Paper Fight. Fake fan. We're not. Wyatt. Look, I think Elder Dragon Hijinks. All the days Earth. run together. They all end in Y. <laughs> That's true. It's true. Yeah, why it? Fake fan. Expo that's gonna that's gonna be the short exposed typical Gemini is a fake fan. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no, Wait, you're, My days you're absolutely of the week. right. You're absolutely right because I look at um, I look at some of the like not mega popular but like your mid tier, mid to high tier uh, gameplay mm -hmm. magic shows. The one that I think of in particular is Play to Win, uh, mm -hmm. where they do CDH content and like. A lot of their games and a lot of their CDH decks are like deck lists from patrons, mm -hmm. games with patrons. They have a hundred dollar tier, and if you subscribe to them for a year, you get an episode dedicated to you on their thing. Like it's a whole crazy and, thing. And just for the fans listening, for the people debating going into that high of a tier, you think people don't remember your name? I know Baby Jeebus's name <laughs> yes. specifically from that. However many times I've heard oh, yeah. it. It's now Baby drilled Jeebus. in here. Oh yeah, he he is he is very well known. <laughs> very, like and a true patron. So that could be patron. you, like loyal fan out there. That could be you. That could that could be you. That could be you. I mean, obviously, to a much smaller degree, we will always know Brandon Vole. Yeah. we've now met him in real life at SCG Con Cincinnati, and like played games with him mm -hmm. in person, and like had dinner with like. You meet these people, and you do no mystery sniper uh, D. There's there's a ton of these names that eventually just keep cropping up and cropping up, and it is it is really cool. It is really cool. So uh, give us a hundred dollars a month, and you can play with us. Uh, there's that option right now. <laughs> it's just not an option. I would make it more reasonable. It would be like of it would course. it would be like twenty five. 
and it would be limited to like two people and then we would just play monday night magic in a pot of four once a month and that's that's what the tier is and you get you get booted out every month or something i don't know i i know how patreon works like kind uh, like i got a surface level i got an operational knowledge of patreon if you will as as people Everyone's like to say gotta start somewhere you, exactly. you know enough just you know just enough to be dangerous indeed that gets thrown a lot around, around a lot in, in my in my workplace which is a little scary yeah that's kind of that's kind of when you work insane. with chemicals and large equipments i feel that that is something because it's like yeah you know just enough that you could really hurt some literally <laughs> I, I work in IT, and uh, that is there's there's a a joke, and apparently it's true. Whenever they hire a fresh database um, manager or like somebody to work on databases, their first week they will, because of knowledge, the knowledge they have, but not the knowledge, but lacking knowledge, they will delete an entire working database. Oh, good God! Uh, I that, was I was told that when I was learning my IT stuff. Went to my job. The first week I was there, I don't work with databases, but the first week I was there, it was Friday, and we got a message that said, hey, new person deleted the database. Can you all stay around while we fix this? I was like, ah, glad it wasn't me. <laughs> that, that didn't take long. Man. But it, yeah, I kind of feel like that's how I am with magic. Mm -hmm. Like, I know just enough to be dangerous. I'm like, I know fetch lands are good. I know that fast mana is good. You try you try to tell me to assemble a CDH combo on the fly. Underworld breach lines. I know Lion's Eye Diamond works and Brain Freeze, and you throw everything into the graveyard. I don't know how you win after that, but oh yeah, they're still playing where they're like, "This know. is an infinite combo." I'm like, "EDH rec, please show me the combo tab." That was the combo. Hmm. Still don't get it. <laughs> you just brain freeze them out afterwards. Oh yeah, you can just brain freeze everyone else and deck them. Yeah. That's right. I know these or things. Or usually I there's probably. other things that, like, you know, you've generated infinite mana now at this point. You can you can do something weird and wacky from there. I've seen people win, like, you get Grape Shot at, as your last spell. You're like, mm -hmm. I've stormed off. Grape Shot. <laughs> I, was wa I was wanting to make Abdel Adrian originally as CEDH, and our friend Lincoln talked me out of it because he's like, it's really, like, not a high-tier CEDH deck. And I play it in person, and I'm like... Maybe it's because people are playing it too like CEDH. And they're only giving themselves like four or five cards to do the Abdel Adrian thing. And everything else is just CEDH good stuff. Where I feel, like I, I feel like you could parse it down just a little bit. And get some of the more cards that make the specific commanders sing. Because you look at a lot of these deck lists and it's like the full suite of Counter Magic. Mm -hmm. And Mystic Remora and Ristic Study. And like... um silence and grand abolisher dranith matter and like all these things that you would expect from an azorius deck of all the good stuff and then it's like oh you've also got you've also got abdel and candle keep sage and also born upon the wind and thassa's oracle and like ephemerate and that's Damn. like it <laughs> and it's like i i feel like and displacer kitten lines and all that kind of stuff but i'm like yeah. i feel like I feel like there's a way that you can massage these things a little bit more, which is why I wanna I wanted to make uh a Judith C E D H yeah. viable deck. Just because it's like Are, are y'all aware of mental misplay? Alan from Mental Misplay? Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah, okay. yeah. with him. He he does stuff like that, like watching him play C E D H and the people he brings on play C E D H. Mm -hmm. They usually don't have the the typical C E D H commanders. They're like the ones. I feel like they're the ones out there on the fringe, like really trying to see what's busted or what could be busted, or mm -hmm. taking it as far as you can to be busted. Because sometimes there's just no way to carry it over that final hump of yeah. C E D H. Sometimes you just have it as high as you can. I feel like he, they were the ones that were making like the Raga Draga Mana Dorks combat damage CEDH deck and like the um oh what is it? I don't think it's is it Nekasar that makes the snakes when people draw cards? Uh, Zyrix. 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 That one where it's like all these card draw engines are going on, so I'm just gonna create a thirty two army one one of, of one one snakes and then win by that. And just going, I feel like going against the met, like the meta buster decks, at least at least at the top end, I find more interesting than like, oh, I'm gonna make a, 
I'm gonna make a Timnacrom uh, Blue Farm deck. You know. Well, that's one of the interesting things about CEDH, in my opinion, is you have these fringe decks and they can win. But what it really comes down to is like data. Yeah. You know, and what do CEDH players look at the most? Just wins, like straight up wins. Like how how many people are playing the deck? How often did it win? You know, that's yeah. that's why like uh, I think comedian MTG he does like the the reports from the tournaments and stuff. Mm-hmm. So he's giving you like, oh, this deck's really coming up, or you know, this deck slowly started to fall off. Like you said, Tim Necrom, Tim Necrom is good, but like one of the standout decks in my mind is like Rock Rack, Silas, Tivit, and um, High End. Mm-hmm. I really like the um, the Crark Sakashima, just because it's like non-deterministic lines and coin flips and it's like you could storm off immediately or you could never hit heads <laughs> on a roll. And they just flip. got that new card in bolt invert polarity. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be a perfect yeah. one for that. Oh just stealing everything instead of counter. And that's we're on we're on right there. That's my second favorite thing. You you hit that where I could just Sak- Sakashima. Sakashima of a Thousand Faces is just a fucking cool card in general. Like I have um our friend Tyler over at the Proxy Forge, proxyforge.com. Uh plug. Plug. <laughs> check out the check out the link in the description for our affiliate link for uh the Proxy Forge. I have a proxy of Sakashima in Abdel specifically to loop them all upon each other. Like he's just so being able to get around the legend rule is just so fucking good. And mm-hmm. so many Sakashima combo. Obviously, Kark Sakashima is like top of the top, but even like Kadama Sakashima is viable. And from what I've been able to see in the Twitterverse, uh, Nadu is making a lot of a lot of waves in CDH right now because apparently there was there. I think there was some random CDH tournament online where the the final pod was like three Nadu decks. <laughs> It's it's because you, it does one of the biggest boogeymen of that format right now currently is probably between uh, Orcish Bowmaster and I'd probably say Dockside is a close second. Mm-hmm. But uh, you always have to pay attention when decks that have blue in them and start doing really good, uh, like or have potential to do really good, come out because that's what. At the end of the day, that's what most CEDH players look at, is blue, because mm-hmm. it has counter spells. Yeah. It has free counter spells. It has ways to not only stop other people's win, but protect your own. And at first, when you read its effect, it's like it can only trigger twice per turn. Okay, it can only trigger twice per turn, but it's creature. for each creature. Yeah. So each time you hit one of those land drops, if you have a Scoot Swarm, or that other new card from Modern Horizons that makes a one one insect if it's yeah. bestowed. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to just slowly just roll into this where you're making more creatures that can be targeted and you end up just chewing through the whole deck. And if which, you're doing it through artifact equip or equipment or equip costs, that's so difficult to interact with because it's an activated ability and you can't counter that. You have to stifle it or have some other way uh, like Ottawaraing your... But then you can just recast it because you're ramping as you're doing all the. It's just card drawn ramp, card drawn ramp stapled onto a three mana commander that by the time it's removed, it probably is ramped enough that you can just recast it. Right, and the pieces. It's hard to know when to like pull the trigger on when you're supposed to stop that piece when yeah. you need to blow it up because it's like okay, well if I counter his shunko or or whatever the is zero equip equipment's gonna be. You know, who's to say that this guy over here isn't going to combo off? Or do I let it resolve because he just spent mana to play it, so it's not really doing anything currently, but if he plays, you know, it's, it mm-hmm. just feeds back into that, where it's like, where's the counter supposed to be? Yeah. And it's going to be powerful now, I feel, because people aren't... They don't know when to interact or what to do about it, but it's like with Tibbet. Like, out, a right? lot of people were... They didn't know what to do about Tibbet when he first came into the CEDH scene. Give them clues, and now it's just like everyone knows clue. Always give them clue. Mm-hmm. 
unless they unless they are low in cards in hand and it looks like they're trying to dig, then you give them treasures. Right. So it's just I think it's just gonna take some time yeah. for the the CEDH meta to kind of adapt. Figure and it out. I think that it will still be very good, but I just think there will be more answers to it. Mm-hmm. I think it's it I'm I'm interested to see where Nadu like ends up in the in the meta. Like if it becomes a new Kinnon where it's like one of the like Kinnon is so far and away the best Simic commander for C E D H and just in general. Mm-hmm. And I wonder like is Nadu going to be in that conversation or is it going to end up being like solved and people will know how to deal with it in a way. Um, and then, ob- I mean, obviously, like right now, if if you're trying to be super competitive in CDH, I feel like you have to have access to blue and black because of Thassa and, and demonic consultation or Thassa and tainted pack. And I don't know. It, it's I'm always excited when a new thing breaks into that high tier, just and kind of disrupts things a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, watching people flash Hulk wasn't boring, but it just became something you knew was coming. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a Thassa Demonic Consultation line. It's like if they had one, they searched the other, or they would just have it off the rip, and it'd just be like, alright, Flash Hulk. And you could do that on top of other people's Flash Hulk, so if someone did it first, you could do it on top of theirs. Yeah. Like That's why Flash had to go. Yeah, Flash, Flash I get. Flash, I get, but I mean, I don't know. CDH is its own entire beast. Um, oh my god, I can never. You two talk for a second. I need to find a thing. Go right <laughs> I have a reference, and I don't want to talk about him without knowing his fucking name. I think we should unban Caracas. What do you think? Caracas. I think Caracas could. Yeah, you know, you could probably unban that. I don't really see a huge problem with it. I even think my the trinket mage. Hot, hottest take about it is you could probably unban Prophet of Prefix. Yes, I agree. I hated that card, and I still probably don't have. There's a lot of there's a lot I dislike about that card, but I think that C not even CEDH. I think just EDH as a whole has moved on so much that it's not going to be as backbreaking as it used to be. Mm-hmm. So the creator I was thinking of, he's a YouTuber called the Trinket Mage. He's like one of those like faceless, but he's got like a little animated avatar guy. And he does really, really good videos talking about magic from a whole bunch of different perspectives. And literally today, I watched this video while I was at work today. He was talking about, quote unquote, the truth behind CEDH, because there's so much conversation around like, Oh, CDH should be its own format and needs to be it needs to have its own ban list that's separate from EDH and he's like, well, no. That's it's just the format. And just like when you talk about modern, like you can you can make a modern deck and just bring a modern deck and play a modern deck of whatever you have. Mm-hmm. But when people talk about modern, they talk about the big players in modern. Yeah. You know? And in it, it's only flipped with EDH specifically because it's considered a casual format. And because of that, people just show up with whatever. And then if you play a cert, like a card, people are like, oh, that's CDH. Or like you happen to get lucky and you win on turn three. They're like, oh, that's a CDH deck. It's like, no, they got lucky and won on turn three. Yeah. Or they're powerful. But CDH is its own beast entirely, but it's the top end. Just like when you watch a modern tournament, you're only seeing the top end of modern. It's just nobody plays casual modern, really. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, the only one I've ever I've all I've heard of otherwise, like like you're saying, you can play whatever. Obviously, there's um the the CPDH for 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 high power <laughs> popper commander, but uh, popper commander is so fun. Have you have you ever played popper commander? I've built several. I have not gotten to actually play it because most of the people that I play with build very powerful commanders so my one of my favorite decks to play is a popper commander phalanx leader mono white go wide plus one plus one counter deck it's fucking awesome i love it and i also have a uh, third path iconoclast pdh we need to jam some pdh on monday night magic sometime you need to make a pdh deck anyway uh, back to the thing i was saying 
<laughs> Sorry, my <laughs> sentence interrupted your your thought. Um, uh, at the la- at the uh, uh, SCG Con, a uh, buddy of or a, a former buddy of mine, he we you know I knew him uh, just after college. He actually runs the local thirty dollar vintage uh, club, which are they play vintage. But only, but they have a deck. They have a cost limit of thirty dollars because vintage, wow. vintage you can play obviously all the things you ever want to Tens play. Tens of thousands oh, yeah. of dollars or more. And he's like, yeah. So uh, and and I talked to him at the first SCG con, and he was like, and I, you know, I was like, oh, I I gotta go in a few minutes. But he's like, oh yeah, cool. Well, here's what we're doing. If you want to stay, you know, come around. He's like, yeah. If you don't have a thirty dollar, you know, we have thirty dollar vintage decks. You just spin this wheel. We'll give you a deck, and you can just play. I was like, oh, maybe I'll come back. I did not, but I wish I did because that seems neat. That is, that is cool. And just to touch back on the winning on turn whatever, even in a budget deck, like I had, I built a pole, the the Forge Master. Uh, it was from Kaldheim. It was one that whenever an equipped creature dies, mm. it goes back to your hand. Mm-hmm. I built that, and when I was test playing the deck, I built it on a budget. I think the budget was like twenty five, twenty bucks. It was something. It was really cheap for what it was doing, and I was like, oh, this is really good. And just randomly, I happened to, as I was test playing, open the perfect seven and drew the, like, just the last card needed and literally won on turn zero. <laughs> like, I go first, no one else goes. It's, the the, the game's over. And that's on a budget deck. Yeah. Like, it's, sometimes... Just you just happens. get lucky. Variance. It all comes. It the game. Any of these card games. It all just comes down to variance. That's that, Exodia. Exodia. And that's Exodia. And that's honestly what it comes down to. The difference between casual and competitive play is that competitive play optimizes for variance, and casual play doesn't. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. all it is. But that's why I think in casual commander, I'm just going to say this. About it in Casual Commander, I do think infinite combos are, for the most part, okay. Absolutely. I, I, because me personally, I'd rather play as many games as possible throughout a night than just one really, really long, continuous game. I will play yes. those games. I don't mind those either, but I'd rather get like three or four reps in instead of just one really, really long game. Absolutely. So I, if I, one I, person just happens to stumble their way into an infinite combo or they're like, okay, well, I drew enough cards. This is an infinite combo, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, great. Let's close out the game. Let's start another one. Let's shuffle up. Let's get the next one going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the problem really comes in, at least in in my in my eyes, the problem comes in is if I sit down with my, yeah, clunky deck and, uh, or not even clunky deck, just my deck that I need a, a minute to work, and then you're like, alright, turn one, tutor up one piece. Turn two, tutor up the other piece. Play them out. Turn three. It's like, okay, that's a little different than what I was expecting of this game. But yeah, if you're like, right. I this is my starting seven. It, it actually kind of sucks, and I don't win unless I rip a land off the top. Sweet. Okay. Then I'm more fine yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. Having... Variance is the name of the game. Mm-hmm. Variance is the name I, of the game. I feel that, though. Like, because when I build budget decks, I like to test play them against my, the people I play with, just to see how they'll do. Mm-hmm. And... Sometimes it's so heartbreaking to play against stuff like that because I'll be like, all right, guys, well, I'm playing this new budget deck I built. It's supposed to do this, this, and this. And they're like, oh, that's cool. Uh, I'm going to play Urza. Great. It's his, this is his low powered Urza. I, I built this Urza deck for him that's supposed to win by making really big constructs. Yeah. Like it, it's not supposed to do anything super broken. It's just supposed to make constructs. That's the whole point of the deck. Mm-hmm. Funny thing, though, um, Urza is just really, really good. And yeah, it's hard it... to build him poorly. <laughs> very, very difficult. It's not that Urza deck. They're all that Urza deck. They are that all that Urza. It's like it's like the you know oh that goes infinite with a ham sandwich. Yeah, yeah. That wins the game. Yeah. Sneeze at it and you'll win the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it, it it started when I was like okay. I built it for him. I test played it. I was like, okay, he'll really like this. I give it to him. He goes through it. He puts in like two cards that he had just lying around. And it was Panharmonicon <sighs> and that 
other card from Eldraine that doubles up your ETVs. Oh, yeah. And he was like, this will be good. I'm like, yeah, that, that sh- that'll, that'll be, be great. Very good. <laughs> Let's play it. So we start playing, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just target Urza. Because if I take out Urza, the rest of the deck kind of falls apart without him. That's when I realized my mistake, because five mana, the whole point of the deck was to blink Urza to make more constructs. So he would just be like, okay, well, you're targeting Urza, I'm going to pay five mana, shuffle the deck, flip the top. Oh, look, it's a blink spell, yeah. so I blink Urza, so now your spell fizzles. And at that moment, I felt total despair, and was just like, oh. And that's when he knew. I forgot that, that those also make mana. <laughs> yeah. Flicker is the answer to all of Magic's problems, <laughs> is what I have learned. I think it's since... Well, Abdel is point. like in, in a league of his own, because... Uh, my blink deck, Brago King Eternal, mm-hmm. you need Brago. You need him. He's what makes the rest of the deck go. So when he gets removed, it's like a fair blink deck. People take it out, they're like, okay, well, you've killed Brago now four times. I cannot cast him again. Mm-hmm. It, the deck is just going to do what it does. But like you said, they kill Abdul. Okay, well, everything under Abdul comes back. It's all back. He's, he's, the, he's the Teferi's protection for my board. Except sometimes I want him to go away real quick and then come right back. <laughs> anyway, Wyatt. We've been going for a little over an hour. I think that is I think that's a good spot. The the cat is getting restless and yeah. she well, she desires her that. dinner. Yeah. You know. Hey, I don't mess around with food either. Hey, same. I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to kill a ham sandwich, probably. I don't have ham. I'm not making a ham sandwich. I'll go infinite with a ham sandwich, so. Yeah. Wyatt, thank we you. We wouldn't go infinite with a ham sandwich. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Wyatt, thank you so much for hanging out. Typical Gemini on TikTok and YouTube. Do you have anything you would like to plug? Anything you'd like to talk about? Uh, Hey, check out the Patreon. <gasps> Sign up for their Patreon. <gasps> They're going to do games on spell tables soon. <laughs> I'll make sure of it. Shit. Shit. Don't worry, guys. I didn't just commit you to anything. <laughs> Shit. If you, didn't, if you didn't live eight hours away, this would be much more terrifying. <laughs> Wyatt! <laughs> <laughs> Typical Gemini on YouTube. Help help get the help get the watch time up. Get the views in. Help him out a little bit so he can hire an editor and make make more content. Make more Somebody sponsor content. this man. Sponsor this man. We need to we need to Breed's Arisen Nightmare is the next deck tech coming. Oh god. It's really, really fun. It'll probably uh, I built it on rats. Nice. It's built around rats. Nice. It'll probably be up by the time this podcast gets posted. So go check that out right now. YouTube.com slash typical Gemini. Of course. One more shout out. Yes. Oh yeah. Congratulations on your 69th episode. Oh. <laughs> by the time this one goes oh, up, that'll be out. Oh, fake fan you say? <laughs> fake fan? <laughs> We haven't figured out what we're gonna do yet. Still, we were okay for for those of you watching this when this comes out. We're recording this a week before episode sixty nine. Nice. No nice. fuck. No fucking clue what we're gonna do. I have no idea. I have no idea. We need to figure something. I think you should just make all in you windows. In your right every in you window ever. Hey, you want to get drunk at work? He works from home. You want to get drunk at work? <laughs> I think that, I, I think it'd be about time that we get drunk on the podcast. <laughs> For episode sixty nine. Anyway, <laughs> we both. By the time people are watching this, you'll know if we got drunk on the podcast or not. So that'll be. Hey. Oh fuck! I got it. I have to coach after on Tuesday. No, Tuesdays I don't. Tuesdays I don't. Tuesdays I don't. All right, cool. We're good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that was a journey. Thank you for watching this, the Lord's fifth episode of Bonus Action and Duels of Mandor Supplement Podcast. Thank you, Wyatt. We want to have you on again soon. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind having you on to talk about magic sets after they release. Yeah, please regularly. Please, that'd be fun. I I have so much knowledge packed in here every <laughs> time, and I want to. I when I go to work, I have to literally wait for specific shifts of these of the two guys I play with, so I can yeah. go talk to them about how excited I am about certain things. <laughs> so this was great. Awesome. I don't want to. I don't want to commit to anything. I don't want to commit to anything because I'm non-committal except for certain things. But we can we can totally talk shit about Assassin's Creed when that comes out. <laughs> oh yeah, and that, then gush about how much great. I love Bloomboro. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. Thank you so much, Typical, for hanging out with us. Uh, be sure to check him out. You can find us on YouTube.com/slash Dungeon Bros on all the social medias, as well as on Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Dungeon Bros. And with all that being said, peace. Ta-ta. Bye. Adios.